hey guys welcome to my channel today is going to be a little different i'd like to call it story time i wanted to update you guys um where i've been why i haven't been posting videos why i haven't been acted on instagram um and just let you know what's been going on with me these past couple of weeks it's been very rough for me very hard time this is a very sensitive topic very emotional but i feel like you guys have been so supportive and we're like a family and i feel like i want to be able to share my story and help somebody make somebody feel better and just know that you're not alone and you know i feel like the best way to heal is to vent because holding it in is just it's not good it just lays dormant and it just keeps piling on top of each other and it makes it worse so if you want to know what's been going on with me then keep on watching so today's october 15th 2017 about a month ago my life went left all the way left and things spiraled downhill for me i found out that i was expecting a baby um, on September 13th to be exact I have two children already um, I'm married and you know it was a very shock to my husband and I we didn't plan this it was unexpected um, and we really didn't know what to do once we were faced with the situation um, a little backstory of me um, I have two little girls but before um, my youngest, who was four years old, I experienced something called ectopic pregnancy um, where I was pregnant in my right fallopian tube and I almost lost my life. I was bleeding internally um, and I had to have surgery and I am left with just one fallopian tube. So um, finding out that I was pregnant was that was a big issue for me. I was scared that it was going to happen to me again. Um, I didn't even know that I was pregnant. I mean, I've seen that there were signs, but I was ignoring it because, you know, when you ovulate or when your menstrual is due, you'll get the same type of pregnancy symptoms anyway. So, you know, the sore boobs. I kind of noticed my appetite was a bit increased. Um, I don't eat a lot. I'm tiny. So I knew something was a little off there, but I figured it's ovulation a little bit. Um, um, and I just felt a little more fatigued, but I did notice spotting. A couple of days before my menstrual was due and I was like, okay, maybe, I don't know, my body's off. I'm changing, you know, but I spotted for three days along with cramping. So that was a little um, worrying to me. Um, so on the third day of spotting, I said, hmm, let me see what's up. I had a random pregnancy test in my drawer. Don't ask me why. I guess you just never know once you become a mother, you become very fertile. So I just had that as a backup um, and I decided to just, you know, sorry, really? I had live on a busy street okay so I decided to take a test um, not thinking anything of it I wanted to just do like a process of elimination to just get that out the way because if I didn't I would have been stressing every day thinking oh my god I'm pregnant when I probably wasn't so I peed on it and I was so anxious and I was just like mm, I'm gonna be good go back to my daily schedule um, no I peed on it. I looked after like five minutes. There was two lines there. The second one was faint, and I'm just like, oh god. I'm no. I know if it's if it's negative, it's just gonna be one line. There's not gonna be not even a nothing. It was two lines, and I was just like, okay. Let me open the window up in the bathroom to get some more light in here. Maybe I'm just super tired. No, that wasn't it. I wanted to die. My immediate reaction was no. Like I held my mouth, and I'm just like, no. I'm bugging. How? And I'm saying to myself, I know how, but me and my husband have been so safe. Like, if we weren't, I would have been pregnant so many more times. And I'm just like, how did this happen? Like I said, I have one tube. I've been so busy. I've been kind of stressed, you know, as life comes with lots of obstacles. And I haven't really been eating good. It's just everything wasn't prepared. So I'm just freaking out because I also was smoking cigarettes. And I'm just like, oh my God, how? So I go get my husband. He runs upstairs and he's just like, wow, we don't know what to do. I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm scared. I'm worried. I'm just angry because I wasn't prepared and I wanted to be able to be financially stable if I wanted to expand my family like we had spoke about in the future. I was scared because I didn't know if it was implanted in my uterus. I'm worried because how am I going to take care of another child? Um, Will I be able to do this in balance being, pre you know, having two children already and being pregnant? You know, I know what comes with it. It was just a lot. Um, so we decided that our first thing was to go to the hospital and get checked out and make sure everything is what it is before we could just decide what we wanted to do next. 
So we get to the hospital and they take um, urine samples and blood. And of course it comes back that it's positive, I'm pregnant. So they wanted to do an ultrasound and that's where the anxiety kicked in because like I said, I was praying that it was where it's supposed to be, which is in the uterus. Um, unfortunately, I guess I was too early and they said they couldn't see any sac yet, but they did see that my uterine lining was thickening, which means it's in preparation for something to you know, form there. So once again, we were on edge and they're like, you have to come back in maybe a week and maybe something else will show we need to see a sac um, and an embryo, obviously, to confirm that there's a live baby. So once again, it was terrifying and I left there incomplete, sad, scared and worried. And it was hard for me to focus each day. I was counting like, is it time to go get an ultrasound yet? Please, God, let there be something. It was really, really stressful. But um. We just had to be patient and, you know, I was eating right, you know, of course, and making my appointments and doing what I needed to do until it was time for me to get the blood work and the ultrasound again. So we wait a couple of days um, and then we go back to the doctors um, to do blood work to make sure that my levels were progressing. Um, my numbers were doubling. The first time uh, they did my levels, it was 107. I went back 48 hours later. Um, and my numbers were like 600. So they were definitely doubling um, the way that they were supposed to. And they wanted to just keep repeating it for another two days and two days to make sure. Because every couple of days, they're supposed to double, 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 double um, as your body's preparing. So after we did that, they sent me back um, a week later to have another ultrasound at the hospital. And once again, I was on edge making sure, scared, making sure that something would be there this time. Um, because we accepted the fact that if we were going to have this, we we're going to have the baby. We were going to, we accepted it. I mean, after being scared and like, how are we going to figure this out? We knew that God would never put too much on us that we could bear anyway. So we were like, this is a blessing. We know we didn't plan this. God said, this is what we want. Let's have it. So we go to the ultrasound and they see a sack now. So you, that's the first sign you want to make sure you see a sack. We were great, um, grateful. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. It is not, um, you know, in my fallopian tube, it's in my uterus. God is so good. Thank you. Um, and they're like, just come back in a few, uh, more days. We want to make sure that there's an embryo there. And I'm just like, there's so many different steps. And I never had this with my other kids. I guess it's because I'm so early. They kept saying, maybe it's because you're early, but it still left me incomplete sad scared anxiety not knowing if i'm gonna have a baby can i when can i be excited about this it's like everything was you have to keep waiting and i was tired of that it was frustrating me and me and my husband were trying so hard to keep it together so we wait again i keep doing the test and my numbers are progressing greatly um they tell me to set up an appointment with one of the midwives where i go um i started doing everything you know in hopes that everything is what it's supposed to be um so yeah we go back a week later um and then they tell me that they see an embryo and by then i was about six weeks i want to say about six weeks they see an embryo and um like a flickering of the heartbeat so i was like wow there's another little us growing inside of me this is this is this is beautiful like you just get a feeling of it's a, it's so much joy in your heart and um i asked them you know could you give me a printout of it of the little sonogram um like they did for my other kids but the lady the tech was like oh no i can't do that um you have to talk it over with your doctor so right then and there was more anxiety. I don't understand why she wouldn't give me a printout of the sonogram. Is there something wrong? That's my first thought. Oh God, there's something wrong. Like there's a baby there, but there's something that is not right because she won't give it to me. So I start getting angry and worried. I start shaking. I'm just like, there's always something. It's just, I can't catch a break. Um, so we have to wait for the doctor to come in. Um, and I'm just like, this is ridiculous. It's taking forever. Just like you want to know what's going on and they take forever. So then the doctor comes in and she's like, oh, um, you know, there's an embryo. There's a heartbeat and everything like that. But the radiologist seems to see something on the sack. And I'm like, see what? What would be on the sack? And she's like, um, it's something called some subcronial hemorrhage or something like that. And I was like, what is that? I know hemorrhage means blood. So I was like bleeding she's like yeah it's like a blood clot that um sometimes forms on outside of the the gestational sac and i was like what does that come from and she's like well i don't really know you have to follow up with you know your midwife or wherever you're gonna go and i'm just like 
So you you send me here, I'm in the hospital, you're a doctor, and you can't even elaborate of what this situation is. So now I'm freaking out. I have to play doctor on my own. I do Google, and I'm trying to Google all this until I get to see a doctor. And it has to do with um, the implantation um, into the uterus. Sometimes um, when it's like plant implanting, um, blood leaks out, and it just goes on, like it stays on, I don't know. All I know was it was... They see a small blood clot on, on the sack. So now I'm just like, this is just only getting worse for me. I can't, I can't. How much more am I going to have to en endure before I have a break breakdown? Because right now I just can't take it. So now I'm just like, I see all of the things and the precautions that comes with having that. Um, Preterm labor, miscarriages, low birth weight. Um, sometimes the... It, the placenta will it attaches away so you know it, it or the blood clot grows too big and it's blocking your baby from growing through the stages it needs to grow it can it just doesn't end good and i'm just like well what if it happens to me it doesn't happen to all pregnancies but the way my luck is i'm like i can't do this i'm not going to put myself in a situation like this and get excited and take another loss i just i don't think mentally i'm able and capable of so now we're just like, okay, what are we going to do? Um, this this isn't making us feel happy at all. It's another, I don't know how to take this. Um, so I go and see, um, you know, one of the midwives. I set up an appointment and I discuss it with the midwife. Um, and the, and she's like, oh, no, it's going to be okay. You know, sometimes the the hemorrhage or the blood clot will um, absorb, your body will absorb it. And, you know, um, or if it doesn't absorb it on its own, you're just going to bleed. And, you know, once the bleeding is over, then you should be fine. And I'm just like, no, that's not okay. Because any sight of blood during pregnancy is so scary. You're really not supposed to be bleeding during pregnancy. So every day I'm peeing and I'm looking down, expecting to see blood. I was just a nervous wreck and I didn't want to live like that. Um, I just, my stomach was in knots and it just wasn't a good feeling. So we were just like, what are we going to do? I still had faith and I still was trying to hang in there. And I want to say when I hit almost seven weeks pregnant, maybe I was like six weeks and four days. That's when the sickness kicked in. Of course, you are going to get sick because of um, the progesterone increasing in your body as your pregnancy is going on in the first trimester. Um, you know, nausea, vomiting, all that stuff. Um, I didn't experience any of that. Um, it almost felt like I had the flu. I couldn't even drink water. Water made me want to throw up. I couldn't really drink anything. I couldn't smell anything. And my stomach was so acidic it was like acid reflux coming up my throat it was a burning sensation excuse me i couldn't get out of my bed my skin hurt everything hurt my lips were chapped i was so sick it looked like i was dying um it was different from my other pregnancies it just felt really bad and normally i can deal with certain things but i was in the bed for days it was like five six days i could barely get out to even shower and i was just like how long am I going to, I can't live like this. I have two kids and it was, it was not a sickness I can even describe to you. I took Zantac, I took Tums, I took everything to try to relieve the sensation in my stomach. It was like the worst feeling ever. I could literally burp and taste the bottom of my stomach. It wouldn't go away. It was like somebody had a lighter inside of my stomach. So I couldn't take it. And I said, something's not right with this pregnancy. It's going to, it's not going to, it's either going to kill me. Or something's not right with this pregnancy. I, it, there's so many different signs there. Yes, God gave this to me. But there's there's so many different signs that are there. And I'm just like, what should I do? And so my thought was to get rid of it. Um, I'm not against abortion. Because certain situations happen to people where they are forced to get rid of the child. Um, I really don't want to. I don't want to believe it that it's okay to do it. But sometimes situations, like I just said, you have to do what you have to do for yourself. And I feel like I need me more right now than, you know, having a child because the ending can be so bad for me. So it laid heavy on my heart. I talked it over my husband and he said, I'd rather you than anything. We have children already. And if this is what you want to do, I'm there for you. It was so hard for me to even Google that number um, and even think about setting up an appointment to get rid of something that is so precious that's growing inside of me. But... um 
I just felt like that was the best thing to do at the time. I was overwhelmed. I wasn't really happy. I was sick. And just knowing that I had something on the side of my baby on the sack, the possible uh, outcome was just not sitting right in my soul. And I just said, you know what, I'll do it as early as I can where, you know, the baby's not growing so big. It's so tiny, a little seed. Um, and we'll do that. So I set up an appointment. I cried for days. I literally was crying like my eyes are still, they're done, but I felt like that was the right thing to do, and I asked God to forgive me, so we made the appointment. I went. It was not a good site. It wasn't a good place, um, and uh, it's very hard for me to talk about, and I regret every bit of it. I went in there in so much pain um, to see so many girls in there. Just their look was different from my look. My look was of... Uh, I can't explain it. I didn't want to be there. I wanted my child, but I didn't wasn't safe. I didn't feel comfortable with what was told to me and I was so sick. I just couldn't get through the sickness. But there was girls there with, you know, big bellies and no fathers there and just looking like this is something normal to them and it was very sad to see. It was so sad to see so many girls come in that building from the time I was in there from the time I left. It was ridiculous. Um, I pray I never have to go back there again. I was so scared laying on the table. It was so cold in the room and all I seen was so many sharp tools and utensils. I couldn't help but shake everywhere over my body. I could barely speak and I just remember the doctor saying, you're going to have the best sleep you've ever had. And I just remember tears just falling down my face and that was it. And, and when I woke up, I was broken. I'm still broken and um, I feel like a part of me is gone. I feel incomplete and I regret what I did. Um, and I prayed to ask God to give me another chance if I ever want to bear a child again. Um, it was it was all for the good reasons. It wasn't bad intentions as to why I did it. Um, but it's just, I'm just sad and I wish that I could have hung in there. But um, it is what it is. If you're pregnant and you are scared don't let people influence you because you babies are beautiful. And sometimes you're like, how can I do this? How can We're always going to try to figure out how we're going to make things work, but we will. If you're determined and you believe in God, you will get through anything. So don't feel like you're forced to get an abortion. Don't let a guy or anybody influence you. It's your life. It's your body. Um, and I feel like I, I did the right thing at the moment. And I guess my hormones are all over the place. And I just, I'm living with regret. It's hard for me to actually post, even talk about this. Um, but I wanted to share it with somebody and um, hopefully be able to help somebody that, you know, if you ever had a subcranial uh, chronic hemorrhage or anything like that, don't be scared. Don't feel like it's the end of the world. I just couldn't deal with it at the time. And don't let anybody pressure you into anything that you don't want to do. Um, so, yeah, it's it's getting easier each day for me. I'm still sad, but I'm trying to get it together. I have two beautiful little girls that look up to me, a loving husband and family, and I'm just trying to shake this off. You know, I'm praying, and each day is getting easier, but there is not a day that goes by that I don't think about what I did, um, and that's the hard part. What what my, would my stomach be like now? How would my body be changing at the moment? But I know that if it's meant to be, I'll be blessed again, and um, yeah. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you can be part of the family. Thank you guys for listening and watching, and I will see you guys in my next video.